Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Marriage Monday. Mind your... How are you? Hello, hello, hello. This is your girl, CEO and founder of Wives Who Win, and also of this group. I haven't done like a pop-in in a while, so I wanted to just pop in on my way from the gym. Hey, Terry, how are you, darling? <clears throat> I wanted to pop in on my way from the gym and just say good morning and happy Monday. Um, I don't know how many of you were on the prayer live this morning, but if you were not on the prayer live, I'm going to ask you to go back and listen. Go back and listen to that live from this morning. I prayed on long-suffering and gentleness in marriage. Long-suffering and gentleness, two fruit of the Spirit that we should be exemplifying in life in general and also in our marriages. And I just wanted to come on and just see what you guys have been up to, what's going on, how are you spiritually, emotionally, mentally, how is everything with your marriage? And I do want to say this, you know, many times we wait until there is an issue or a problem to seek out help, support, um, or any level of assistance when it comes to our lives. Think about it. We don't wait. Um, we don't go to the doctor or start taking care of ourselves until we get sick, right? So it's not until we get a cold or um, get the flu or, you know, something, some ailment in our body starts hurting or aching or something. Then we take it serious enough to say, hey, now I need help. But why is it with our marriages we don't do, we, we do the same thing? We do the same thing. We wait until something is wrong. We wait until something happens and then we seek out the help. I am on here today just to encourage you guys to don't wait until something happens. You don't have to seek coaching or counseling or therapy because something is wrong per se. But the purpose of getting involved with any of those things that I just mentioned is to maintain, is to maintain your marriage, is to make sure your marriage stays healthy is to make sure your marriage stays happy because when you wait for something to happen and your marriage is now in a compromising position your marriage now is in a rough spot that is really hard um, it will be really hard for you to deal with that number one and really hard for you to work through it when you could have been working on these things beforehand <clears throat> So I want to encourage you guys, don't wait until something happens to seek help, support, mentorship, counseling. Don't wait until, you know, you feel the distance in your marriage. Don't wait until there is division. Don't wait until you stop having sex. Don't wait until date nights, you know, stop happening all together. Don't wait until that time. You want to maintain the, the happiness. You want to maintain the health and the wealth of your marriage. And part of that, part of doing that is linking up with someone like me, a coach, a counselor, or a mentor of some sort to be able to help you to maintain. You know, there are different aspects of our life as there is to our marriage. And we have to make sure that we're nurturing and we're caring for those different areas in our marriages and also our life. And when we neglect those areas, then issues arise. And when they do it, well, they arise anyway. But when they arise um, at the point of neglect, then it's harder to work through it. It's harder to work through it. You know, you don't want to wait until the point you're separated and headed for divorce to say, now I need help. You know, let's, let's be proactive as wives and as wives who win to get the help that we need. So if you need to build your faith, let's do that. If you need to build other areas in your life, let's do that before it gets to a point where it's going to be harder to recover. You know, same thing, I can relate this to, you know, working out and eating healthy. You know, you don't want to wait until you gain 50 pounds to say, okay, now I need to do something about it. You want to do something about it beforehand. You want to work toward that goal beforehand, right? Work to get healthy, work to get fit, work to maintain your health and fitness, work to maintain. So marriage maintenance is just as important than marriage recovery. I'm going to say that again. Marriage maintenance is just as important, if not more, than marriage recovery because if you're maintaining and managing the marriage and managing the expectation, there would be no need for the recovery part. Okay? All righty, guys. Well, I'm going to run into Harris Teeter right quick. I need to get some oat milk and some Himalaya salt. 
And um, I will talk to you later. I pray that this message has hoped at least, uh, at least hope, at least helped. I can't talk this morning. I pray that this message this morning has helped at least one person. At least one person has been able to take something out of this. And if you are seeking a coach or a counselor uh, to help you maintain your marriage, maintain your position and role as a wife in marriage, definitely hit me up. You can always DM me. I can give you my link to schedule a free one-on-one consultation. I would love to work with you for a period of six weeks or even six months if that's what is required at this time. Um, I have different packages and programs that are available and that's suited for you. I have one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as group coaching and I'm looking forward to speaking with any of you to be able to support you in any way that I can so that you can continue winning in your marriage and building a God-centered marriage because that is the end goal. Okay. All right, you guys have a blessed day. Talk to you soon.